An eight-hat room quietly emerges, dimly lit by a 30-watt electric bulb. Mosquito-repelling smoke wafts along the veranda. It is Wednesday in July, 1948, after eight in the evening. Under the light bulb, 22-year-old Mitsue, a librarian, wearing a white blouse and work trousers, is writing something with a pencil at the book table. Having finished writing, Mitsue, glancing at the text sideways, begins the story. It is still in its early stages, and she reads it tonelessly, penciling in corrections from time to time. Our Hiroshima has been known since ancient times as the beautiful city on the water that embraces seven rivers. Those seven rivers merge into the northern outskirts into a single river called the Oodagawa. I used to go every week with my friends from the Japanese literature class out to the villages that lined the Otagawa and enjoyed hearing the old stories that were told throughout the region. To tell the truth, we liked even more being treated at the places we visited, such delicacies as soybean-flavored oyster stew, rice with matsutake mushrooms, and devil's tongue basted with bean paste. And so we enthusiastically roamed all around. The story I will tell you now is one of the old stories we were told at the time by an old villager. If I remember correctly, we heard it over broiled trout. <clears throat> now, in a mountainous place not far from the Otagawa, there lived a grandpa and grandma. Because grandpa was greedy, Lazy Bones, a useless fellow who never worked, Grandma did everything by herself, from doing laundry and gathering firewood to broiling trout, and so eked out a living. One day, Grandma, who had gone out trout fishing, felt terribly thirsty, so she drank a mouthful of water from the river. Lo and behold, all the wrinkles instantly vanished from her face. She drank another mouthful, and her back straightened up. She drank yet another mouthful, and turned into a dazzlingly beautiful young woman. After hearing about this from Grandma, who hurried home to tell him what happened, Grandpa exclaimed, Why should only you become young again, Grandma? I'll show you what a handsome young buck I'll become. I won't be outdone by you. So saying, he flew out of the house and vanished. Night came, but he still did not return. The rumbling sound of a mixing bowl was heard from the kitchen. Takezo, a twisted towel wrapped around his head and wearing an apron, is grinding up small dried sardines, snatching up a fan from time to time to swat at mosquitoes. Papa? Ah, it's hot every day. You're here. Of course I am. It's been one whole day since I saw you last. <clears throat> Can you do something about that rumbling? It's bothering me and making it difficult to practice. What are you doing? Making bean paste mixed with dried sardines, naturally. Look at the expertly ground up sardines. How did you know I wanted to make bean paste with sardines? There were the sardines, and there was the bean paste. <laughs> so it was easy to guess. Now we put in all the bean paste. From a bowl at the side, he chucks the bean paste into the mixing bowl and resumes grinding. Grinding. And then we add finely chopped red pepper. Red pepper. Red pepper! He <coughs> picks up chopped red pepper from a small nearby dish and puts it into the mixing bowl. Takezo expertly grinds it up. One serving coming up of bean paste with sardines, a famous specialty of our Fukuyoshi Inn. Mm -hmm. Tastes good. Mm. Papa's talent has not diminished yet. Mm? So, how does the story you were just telling continue? What happened to the greedy grandpa? Mm -hmm. Grandma, worried that grandpa hasn't returned even after nightfall, picks up a lantern and goes out to meet him. What does she find at River's Edge? But a greedy-faced baby bawling his lungs out. <laughs> that won't be popular with children these days. It it, it's too subtle doesn't have to be popular. But of course it would be better if it were a little more interesting. I know, this is how you should change it. Grandpa doesn't return after nightfall. He's vanished. Grandma, worried, picks up a lantern 
and goes out to meet it. What does she find at River's Edge? But a pair of dentures, nothing else. <laughs> Greedy Grandpa drank too much rejuvenating water, so he passed beyond being a baby and disappeared. Yeah, even I can see that much. <laughs> I think they'll laugh more than at the way yours turns out. It's wrong to tamper with the story. Stories told us by earlier generations are to be transmitted to later generations faithfully, just as they are. This was the way of the folklore study group at our Hiroshima Women's Junior College. Didn't the group catch hell from the prefectural school inspector six years ago? You were told it's wartime, a time of crisis. What's studying old stories good for? If you have so much free time, work in a factory. I think the group broke up by the end of 1942. But the group's original spirit lives on in me even now. Today at noon, you said the same thing when you were quarreling with Mr. Kinoshita. It wasn't a quarrel, it was a discussion. But the folks who came to Hijiyama Pine Grove because its coolness makes it ideal for napping were startled awake by your loud voice. I'm telling you, it was just a discussion. Itsue returns to the eight mat room and tries to memorize the manuscript. Takezo is dividing the bean paste with sardines and packing it into two earthenware containers. I hear it was the atomized tile that first got Mr. Kinoshita interested in the atomic bomb. what he said. That year, at the end of August, Mr. Kinoshita had to go home to Iwate Prefecture for a while, so he came from Kure to Hiroshima, and while waiting for his train, wandered all around the burned out ruins. Noon came, and so he sat down in Otomachi District, around where a temple used to be, and opened up his lunchbox. It was then he felt a piercing pain in his backside as something sharp penetrated the expensive cloth used for making Navy officers' trousers. There was an atomized tile at the spot where he sat down. Taking a look, he saw the tile was covered with what looked like standing thorns, every one of them jutting in the same direction. These were no doubt made in a flash of heat, incredibly high heat, which instantly melted the surface. What a hell of a bomb. He must understand this bomb. He must find out what on earth took place in this searing heat. So thinking, Mr. Kinoshita headed toward the station, picking up pieces of atomized tile along the way. He said that too. You kept one of those atomic tiles, I believe. Mitsue lowers a cloth-wrapped bundle from the top of the bookcase. I didn't keep it. Mr. Kinoshita forced it on me. Takezo takes it and unwraps it atop the book table. Inside is a flat confectionery box made of paper. Takezo raises its lid and freezes. The confectionery box contains an atomized tile, a warped bottle for medicine, and several shards of glass. Mitsue takes them from him, but with great reluctance. Fragments of glass extracted from the bodies of bomb victims. Cruel. Atomic tile. Needle sharp. Bottle for medicine, warped by the heat. Terrible. Mr. Kinoshita says that at his place, there are dozens of beer bottles bent into the same strange shapes, and sake bottles twisted as round as horns. There's also a stone lantern with its melted surface turned to bubbles, and a large clock whose hands are burned into its face. Because of those things, Mr. Kinoshita is being driven out of his lodgings, though it's less than a month since he moved in. Really? Whenever he comes back carrying the materials, his landlady says, bringing in such stuff is creepy. I'll have to charge you more rent because you're sure to break the floor with it soon. She keeps making disagreeable remarks. The dinner the day before yesterday, when he brought in atomized tiles in a petroleum can, was especially bad. There was less rice in his bowl and fewer ingredients in his soup, too. Cold-hearted. That's why Mr. Kinoshita asked me today. I have an unreasonable favor to ask you. I couldn't have
have you keep the atomic bomb materials in the library, could I? Can't you? If General MacArthur said yes, it would be a different story. I felt bad about refusing him on the spot, so I, I asked him to let me think about it for a day. So tomorrow, I'll have to meet him over the lunch break. What a troublesome visitor. Hand me a handkerchief. What? Oh, here. Takezo starts wrapping a container of bean paste with sardines using Mitsue's handkerchief. I've put Mr. Kinoshita's share of the bean paste with sardines into this pot, so take it tomorrow and give it to him. Papa, you are awful! For some reason, men cannot resist a woman's handkerchief. You meddler, I'm telling you not to make a fuss over imaginary things. In that case, you can give it to your manager. The manager's wife is very jealous, so I wouldn't want to cause a misunderstanding. <laughs> In that case, you better give it to Mr. Kinoshita after all. Mitsui angrily puts it on the book table. Please don't do this again. Forget about that, and try to remember instead what started the argument with Mr. Kinoshita. This is what Mr. Kinoshita finally said. To explain your own experience of the bomb to the children, couldn't you create a good story using my atomic materials? Mr. Kinoshita is a person of wisdom. I told him I couldn't. Because we deeply believe that stories are not to be tampered with. That again. I can more or less understand sticking to the stories you've gathered yourselves, but... But Mr. Kinoshita kept pressing this, these materials on me and wouldn't give in at all. So I finally yelled, I can't do what I can't do. That's what happened. Wait, I've just had a brilliant idea. Oh, that's your specialty, Papa. And synonymous with unreliability. Whenever you have a brilliant idea, you start a new business, or make a pass at some ladies, or spend the fortune Grandpa left you on anything other than our little inn. Even if I'd increased that fortune, it all in the end would have been turned into ashes by the bomb. You might say I was far-sighted. That's a truly disrespectful thing to say about people who work with all their might. I, I know, but you realize you'll end up quarreling endlessly because you insist on telling the stories you gather. How about putting the information about the atom bomb into stories that everyone knows? That will delight Mr. Kinoshita. The Summer Break Story Club is intended for children. I know. So you tuck the atom bomb information into well-known stories, like those of Momotaro, the Peach Boy, or the battle between the monkey and the crab, or Isunboshi, the one-inch warrior. How do I do that? It's your job to think how to do it. The Occupation's Army's eyes are all over the place, Papa. It's because you don't realize the Army's power that you talk so nonchalantly. I've got it! I have to memorize my stories. You don't have to stay any longer, but please come again. That's it. Because it's storytelling that you'll do. Wind will come up to you as you speak and scatter your words in all directions of the compass. Your words will sweep through the hearts of the good children, rise up on the wind into the sky, and become a rainbow. No evidence will remain. The Hiroshima wind that blows through Hijiyama will be your ally. While speaking, Takezo inserts young Kinoshita's atomized materials into the two lower pockets and one upper pocket of his apron. Don't know if this will be useful to you or not, but listen. Isunboshi, the one-inch warrior. Everyone knows Isunboshi, who arrived in the capital city of Kyoto by sailing there in a tea bowl. To rescue a princess from a demon, he jumped into the red demon's mouth and, using a sewing needle as a sword, pricked all around the inside of his stomach and finally got the demon to surrender. A strong fellow, definitely strong, but the Isunboshi of Hiroshima is stronger yet. Isunboshi of Hiroshima? Fukuyoshi Mitsue's Apron Theater begins! Apron Theater? <laughs> Putting the apron pockets to good use, you can really boost the story. Now, up to this point where he leaps into the red demon's stomach, it's the same. But beyond that, it's very different. Isunboshi of Hiroshima, who has jumped into the red demon's stomach, presses this atomized tile against the demon's underbelly. Hey, you, demon! Open up your dirty ears and listen up. What I'm holding is an atomized tile from Hiroshima. You know that on the morning of that day, in the, six, in the sky, 600 yards over Hiroshima, there exploded something called an atom bomb. A second after the explosion, there arose a fireball whose temperature was 22,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Hey, do you understand what kind of temperature 20, 22,000 degrees Fahrenheit is? The temperature of the sun is 11,000 degrees. So on that day, 600 yards of Hiroshima, there rose two scorching, scorching suns with two suns appearing low overhead for one or two seconds. Everything on the ground, people, birds, insects, fish, buildings, stone lanterns, instantaneously melted. Every single thing bubbled up and melted. Roof tiles melted too. On top of that, the bomb blast swept in. The bomb blast at 400 yards per second, faster than sound. Blasted by its atomic wind, the melted tiles all grew ragged. Then they cooled and jutted with jagged thorns like pillars of frost. The tile, this tile, is now a grater for radish. Nay, a flower bed of spikes. With these terrible jags, I will grate your liver to shreds. Rub it up, rub it up, rub it up, rub it up, rub it up. And he strikes the red demon who rolls around, pale with agony. Mitsue is frightened. Takezo pulls the medicine bottle from the lower left pocket and raises it. At once, Isun Boshi of Hiroshima pulls out a twisted medicine bottle that was warped by the melting heat. Hey, you demon! Now I am going to plug up your butthole from the inside with this atomized medicine bottle. Drop dead from constipation for all I care. Takezo takes a shard of glass from the upper pocket and raises it high. Hey, you demon, this is a shard of broken glass that pierced the human body. That bomb blast blew to pieces the glass of all the Hiroshima windows and stuck the splintered glass into human bodies till people looked like hedgehogs. Stop! With this terrible glass knife, I will cut your liver and guts to ribbons. Enough! What an inhuman thing they dropped. Human beings piled up two suns on top of their fellow human beings. Adding atom bomb material to a story may be too painful for the hero, the people, the people of Hiroshima after all, no matter what kind of story it is. This has to be kept in mind. I wanted Mr. Kinoshita to be Pleased with you, but I've done a bad thing. My brilliant idea was not so good after all. He disappears into the back of the kitchen, carrying the cleared away objects. As a present to Mr. Kinoshita for tomorrow, please just give him the bean paste with sardines. Thank you for all your help. She looks, but he is not there. Papa? Papa? It slowly grows dark. 